Before we start the video, I want to give a big shout out to my KOG members of the month, Ryan McDonough, Nero Diamond, Blue Cat, and Bulldog DX. You guys are awesome, just saying. If you want your name here, consider hitting that join button for exclusive channel benefits. How's it going guys? RNG Life here, and today we got the new level cap increase for 5D's world, so you see all the 5D's characters have now reached level 40, which is pretty nice, so that gives us five levels of rewards which two of them are gems so you can earn a good uh, 450 gems by leveling up each character and that is already pretty nice so uh, free gems is always a good thing i always love it when they raise the level caps because my characters are almost always cap like straight up maxed uh so today we're gonna be taking a look at all the new rewards and we're gonna be judging which are the best and which are probably not the not the greatest so let's go ahead and get things started obviously all of them at level 36 we get the ur jewel which i don't really think is worth anything at this point um if you've been playing as long as i have or if you're not even if that's the case if you've been playing this game you should have two things and one of those is gold the other one is a bunch of ur or sr uh, jewel thingies so you should have a whole bunch of those uh everybody has those i i don't know why they keep giving them out i, I also kind of hope that at a certain point they stop giving out gold too uh but i don't know dude if they were if that was gems right here instead of that thing i think that'd be a little bit better but fair enough they're giving us uh, uh some gems so uh they're giving us gems right there the cards that you say are, is getting is miracles wake at level 38 which is target one monster that was destroyed by battle and sense uh, and sense of the grave this turn um, special summon it so not bad if you lose a monster it brings it back it's a pretty okay like I guess you can call them reprints uh, where, where there's a lot of cards that are like hard limited to one uh, hard limited to two for example you know your unknown synchron I think it's okay to give us another one but I don't know they better give us something really good at level like 45 so, Unknown Synchron is a pretty good card to give us a second copy of. I think Yusei's cards are a good, like, decent. Eh, they're, they're not the best cards, but they're pretty decent. I'd give them a, a straight up 6 out of 10. Not bad. Next up, we got our boy <laughs> Jack Atlas with a hot red deck right there, by the way. All right, so all of them at level 36 are getting that trash UR jewel. Rip, dude. I love the gems, though, and that's pretty nice. And then we get, uh, I think it's our third copy of Dark Resonator, so... That's pretty welcome because Dark Resonator is a really, really good free-to-play tuner that anybody who's starting the game and they're just grinding out characters, if you get Dark Resonator, that is a really decent tuner to use. Um, it's just safe from destruction once per turn, and maybe next turn you can synchro with it. I think it's a really, really good card. Uh, and there's also some Resonator support, so if you use it with this guy, uh, you can probably make a pretty decent deck. So uh, Dark Resonator is a very, very nice card. Uh, it's not the best once again, but it's all right. It's a pretty good uh, card to give us for Jack. And then there's Dark Bug. Uh, this is a card that I think he has as a level 35 reward, and they just gave it to us at level 40 as well. Uh, is that the theme for all of them? Hold on. Uh, level 35, they gave us Unknown Synchron. I think that's the theme for all of them. So whatever their 35 reward was, they're giving it to uh, to us again. So, But not all of them. I know that, for, and that's for a fact. Uh, so like I was saying, we got the Dark Bug. Now, you might be thinking, what is this card? I've never seen anybody use it, to be honest. It says, when this card is normal summon, select and special summon one level 3 tuner monster from your grave. The effect of that monster is negated. It's kind of like a budget, uh, uh, what's his name, um, Junk Synchron. You normal summon it, special summon a level 3 tuner, like this, and synchro for 4. Now, there, I don't think there's enough level 4 synchros in the game to justify this to being a reward but i don't know maybe if we start getting some more level four rewards then then maybe this card's gonna be good but until then dark bug is not really that great of a card next up we got our boy crow so crow is here uh he's giving us some new black wings obviously like he's his level 35 was uh what uh pinaki the waxing moon and you know that's gonna be his level 40 as well it seems that's that's the kind of theme with the uh, signers at least so it's something i don't even know if this guy was one of the ones that was mainly used so that's a thing and then he's giving us this guy honestly i'm not sure if these guys are gonna be that good i really don't uh can they special summon themselves let's see during either player's turn you can discard this card target one black wing monster you control it gains 500 attack uh probably not that great uh and then we got this guy who's got a very long effect says cannot be used as synchro material except for the synchro of a black wing synchro monster during the end phase this card is in the grave because it was sent there to, from the field this turn uh you can add one black wing monster from the deck to your hand except himself uh i 
guess he's okay. And he's a hard once per turn. I mean, you synchro with him and then you get a search. I think that's an alright card to have it too. Uh, it's not bad. The only thing is, Black Wings are already so fast that they they don't even need this card. <laughs> but I could I could see them using it either way. But I don't know, dude. It, it can't special summon itself, so that's probably why it's probably not going to be run. Uh, we got Akiza over here. So Akiza, uh, we got some uh, obviously like and it's just generic like plant support that they that they give her. Uh, they got Violet Witch, which which says uh, if this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the grave, add one plant type monster with 1500 or less defense from your deck to your hand. I mean, I think it's a good free to play option. I I think it's an okay free to play option. Any kind of searchers are pretty decent. Uh, the only thing that sucks is it's got to be destroyed by battle. So. Unless you're going to be crashing this into your opponent, it's probably a little bit slow, but I mean, it's a level up reward. It's a Kiza themed, might as well. Uh, so there's that. And then there's that uh, Botanical Lion, who I have very, very rarely seen anybody summon this card. Like, I've almost never seen anybody play Botanical Lion, like, ever. So, I mean, they gave us another copy of that. What, what are the other options? What, what other cards could they have possibly given us for a Kiza? Because honestly, her, her rewards are pretty bad. They're not really that great. So, yeah, I don't think she really has anything that's too uh, fantastic. So, uh, I don't know, dude. It's, I guess I guess her rewards are kind of meh. Not very great. So, there there you go. I mean, level up Akiza at your own risk. Uh, do it for the gems. Do it for the gems. It's my dream. Next up, we got Leo over here who dreams to be the king. Uh, Leo, actually, I'm, I'm kind of liking some of his support. Uh, so, his level 38 reward is the Morphtronic Lantron. Uh, who I think this card is pretty cool, honestly. Uh, when this card is in attack position, any effect damage you would take from an opponent's card effect is infl inflicted to your opponent instead. Now, that's pretty decent. I, I know some people have used this card in a cheese deck that completely like makes your opponent just take burn damage. I'm not sure, but I, I don't know if anybody was using this guy. I might have seen somebody use this guy in one of those infinite damage uh, decks. Uh, kind of like the one I made uh, to fight, um, what's his name, dude, Aigami. Uh, so this is kind of something something that could be pretty cool. Uh, while in defense, when this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the grave, you take no battle damage uh, for this turn. So it's kind of like a Wing Karibo at least. So I think this card is all right for maybe a stall deck or something. I don't know. Uh, then we got the Smart Fawn, which I think is another pretty decent card. If you like pl to play Morphtronics, which, hey man, it's a pretty fun deck. So... I think it's okay. Leo's reprints, I guess you can call them, uh, they're pretty alright. I, I don't know. Once again, I mean, they're very exclusive to his archetype, so that's why I can't really give him an honest, uh, like, rating. But yeah, I think it's it's just fair, dude. It, it's fair for his archetype, so eh, pretty cool. Uh, and then we got our girl, Luna, over here. So uh, Luna, her rewards are pretty much the, is it just a reprint of the 33 and 35? It might be. Because 38 and third and 40 are pretty much the same cards. We got Bear Blocker over here. Uh, during your opponent's turn, set cards you're in your spell and trap card zones cannot be destroyed by card effects. Which I think it's an all right card. It's not that great to be honest. What does it protect you against? Um, Galaxy Cyclone. I mean, cool. Uh, it's like all right. They're just not going to use Galaxy Cyclone. Uh, Cosmic Cyclone though. That's going to get through because that doesn't destroy. That banishes. And you also have to have a bear blocker on the field, which I don't think people are going to be doing. So, bear blocker, eh. They're giving us more exclusive cards for them. And then we got Counselor Lily over here, who is, I, I know some people like. Uh, when this card is sent to the grave for a Synchro Summon, you can pay 500 life points to have that Synchro Monster gain 1,000 attack until the end phase. Uh, I mean, she's the tuner. She's okay, I guess. If you're going to be like normal summoning her on the turn of the of the synchro, maybe like if, let's say you already have a board established, you nor you normal summon her synchro, maybe pay the cost to give your monster a boost. That could be pretty decent. But once again, I don't know. I, I think I think the resonator is way better than her. But I don't know, dude. Uh, I've also never seen anybody ever play uh, Counselor Lily. So that's why that's why I kind of have to say that. So I don't know these cards. These cards don't look that great, to be honest. Uh, so Luna is kind of a uh, striking out right there. Here is uh, something interesting, by the way. <laughs> this is looking pretty interesting. Now they could not give us his 33 and 35 rewards were both two copies of Goyo Defender. They're like, 
We can't give them a third copy of, or maybe, or even a fourth copy of Goyo Defender. That'd, that would just be dumb, giving us four copies of a card. What would be the point of that? So they couldn't do that. So for Trudge, they had to do something a little bit different, which I kind of liked. Uh, on his level 38 reward, they gave us Shield Worm, which is a different card. It's a new card. We don't have this. And it says, when this card is summoned, it is changed to defense position. Then send one card from the top of your opponent's deck to the grave for each face-up insect monster you control. I mean, it, it's going to mill at least one card from your opponent's deck. It's something new, something we don't have. I like getting new stuff in Duel Links, dude. Uh, so it would, normally, like, with all the other 5Ds characters, we've been getting nothing but, like, just extra copies of other cards. But I do like it when they give us just, like, a, a nice, like, one-off, like, ooh, a taste of some new power. Uh, like, Shield Worm. I think this card is pretty cool. It, it looks interesting. It's not gonna, It's not that great. But it's a big wall monster that you can just instantly put in defense. That makes you feel like classic Yu-Gi-Oh! When you normal summon a monster in defense position for some reason. Uh, so yeah, Shield Worm, not a bad card. But what I'm really, really hyped about is his third, is his, not 38, uh, 40 reward, Montage Dragon. They legit gave us a second copy of Montage Dragon. And I am really hyped about that. If you guys don't know why, Montage Dragon is kind of a crazy card we've had him at one for the longest time and i have a deck that kind of uh cheeses wins from people and it, it's really really good it's a very good deck it, you use it to just completely flex on an opponent and and just kind of farm skills farm gems uh farm level ups on your characters and and it just it's just really really good with you by using montage dragon uh, it's probably one of my biggest videos that uses it but montage dragon at two is looking pretty good because that means that gives us more chances to kind of pull off the montage dragon meme and i really really like that i kind of i kind of want to update my montage dragon deck uh montage dragon a straight up like really really good card to reprint i've been looking forward to this for a really long time so that's a straight up 10 out of 10 for me next up we got uh dark signer Callan kessler who by the way we might we might be getting uh, his uh, original version so it looks like all the dark signers we're going to get their, their Dark Signer version and their, like, normal version, which I think is pretty cool. It's a good way to give us, like, multiple characters in 5D, so not bad. Now, you know, Kallen has, like, has his rewards. He's got his Infernities. Infernities are straight up trash in Duel Links. They're, they're not good, no matter how many card, like, skills they give us for, um, for <laughs> Kessler over here. It just doesn't make them good. <laughs> It's a deck that only works if you're like kind of losing if you don't have a hand But if you don't have a hand you can't really do anything unless your whole deck plays from the grave Which I mean in front of these kind of do but they also kind of don't because they require you to discard and do stuff So I don't know but we got infernity necromancer who is a okay reprint I mean, it's all right, but it's still not gonna make infernities playable We need to get infernity archfiend if we want to make the deck good so, so far, them not giving us our Archfiend is just terrible. It's not, it's not good. Uh, and then his level 40 reward, Infernity Break, I think is somewhat decent. But like I said, Infernities are still bad. Having a second copy of Infernity Break is really, really good. So I think that's pretty awesome because this card says, if you have no cards in your hand, target one Infernity card in your grave and one card your opponent controls, banish the first target. And if you do, destroy the second target. So I like it because it it's just kind of makes plays. You can use it on your opponent's turn if he's messing with you. Uh, he's trying to mess you up. But, but in the current meta, current game state, uh, destruction is not very good. I will say that. I mean, yeah, there, it's kind of like a budget Raigeki break. Or, uh, yeah, I think it's called Raigeki break. Um, but yeah, it's an alright card, I guess. Not bad. Dark Signer Carly Carmine over here. Alright, so Carly also has a pretty interesting reward. Uh, sh they gave us, did they give us something new? I think they gave us something new for her because her 33 is Bending Destiny. And I was like, you know what? They could have given us another copy of this. That card's not bad. It's, it's like a one of. And then they have a Fortune Vision, which is another really, really good card. It's really, really good for Fortune Ladies. Uh, and her level 38 reward happened to be just Magic Cat. And I was like, what is this card? And it says, if this card is sent to the grave for a Synchro Summon of a Spellcaster type Synchro Monster, already looking really situational, super situational. Uh, but fair enough, maybe you can summon it with a Dark Magician's... Uh, Dark, dark ma magician navigation. Yeah, I uh, potentially summon it with that. Uh, so cool. You can return one spell card from the grave to the top of your deck. So, eh, I, I guess it's not that great. Uh, and then they did give us a second copy of Fortune Vision, which I think is really good. It, you're probably gonna want to level her up for this. 
But the only thing that's good about Fortune Ladies is the fact that they make Fortune Lady every, and Light Swarms already technically do that. So, I don't know, dude. I feel like Fortune Fortune Ladies are just kind of outclassed. They're not that good anymore because of the fact that Light Swarms could probably make Fortune Lady every without, without being so complex. Like, her deck is so... It's so roundabout to try to make this one boss monster who's amazing, by the way. Fortune Lady Every is so good. But it's just like, oh yeah, Light Swarms can do that like super easy. They can spam out sevens like nothing. And they use spellcasters. So yeah, they, they do it a lot easier. So I, I, this card is good, but I don't know if it's going to get people playing Fortune Ladies. <laughs> but whatever, keep things moving. Okay, here we go. We got Dark Signer Rex Goodwin over here. So Rex Goodwin has some cards to reprint and i don't like them i really don't like them dude they're giving us the moon dragon kuila and the sun dragon inti now why don't i like this because these were farmable cards i have like 12 copies of each of these i'm almost positive so that's why i'm just like dude i mean it makes sense that they give us these but the thing is they had already given them given them to us before in an event i guess it's good for the people who don't and, and haven't um I, I don't know i would say the people who haven't unlocked him well i mean they then they can't level him up dude but i don't know if you if you basically have this guy you have like 50 copies of these guys if you try to unlock this guy so i don't know dude um I'm, I'm just i just think these were like probably the biggest oof of the reprints of the of the new level up rewards i'm just like i don't know about these guys i really don't they give they give us straight up farmable cards right now dude uh so i don't know if these are that worth it so, I don't know, that's, that's got to be another, like, 1 out of 10 for me. Uh, that's, that's not looking that great. Now, for the last character, and I probably think this is the best, uh, we got our, our girl Carly Carmine over here, Swirly Glasses herself. Uh, now, one of our cards is really good, the other one's terrible. <laughs> now, they could have given us some stuff like, oh, look, hey, unacceptable result, uh, they get lucky loan. If they don't, we don't already have these at 3, then uh, cool. I mean, that would have been all right. But no, they chose to give us the Eye of Truth. Which, I'm just like, wait, isn't this like a super old card and it's not good at all? I, I guess. I don't know. I, I have to literally look that up. I honestly have to look this up. I'm pretty sure Eye of Truth has been in the game for like ever. Um, but I, I gotta check. But that's not the reason why I'm talking about it. Her, that Eye of Truth is terrible. But Grand Spellbook Tower is kind of insane. The only reason I made this video is because Grand Spellbook Tower was one of these level rewards. And I want to tell you guys, this card is kind of crazy. I had a friend who played Prophecy, who played the spellbooks all the time. And he would abuse this card so hard, it was kind of messed up, like, how many combos he had with this card. It's a really, really, really good card. If you can pull it off a spell with spellbooks. And in Duel Links in a 20 card format where you're just able to spam out all your stuff. And it's also spellbook, so you can search it, I think. I I'm pretty sure you can also search it. And it's a field spell. You just have it forever. And if it d gets destroyed or something, I think it pays for itself. I, I don't I don't want to read the effect because it's too long, but I guess I have to. It says, once per turn, during your standby phase, if you have a spellcaster-type monster in your side of the field, uh, or in your graveyard, dude, it doesn't even matter. If you have them in the grave, it's it's good. Uh, you're solid. You can place one spellbook spell card from your graveyard on the bottom of the deck. This is just so you can search. This is just so you can search that extra copy of whatever, power or whatever. Uh, so you're just like, oh, I've already used Spellbook of Power. Uh, let me put it back on the bottom of the deck so I can search it again. That, that's the only reason. So that's why this, this card is pretty nice. Uh, so it puts them back in the bottom of the deck except this card. Then you draw a card. So immediately, you put one back and you draw. Super good right there. That's amazing. That's such a good, that's such a good card. Uh, and then it says, when this card in your possession is destroyed by your opponent's card and sent to your graveyard. Now, I'm not going to say it's going to be destroyed because Cosmic Cycle and Meta, by the way. Um, but if it is destroyed and sent to the grave, you can special summon one spellcaster type monster from your hand or deck whose level is less than or equal to the number of spellbook spell cards in your graveyard. Now, that could be really, really good. I mean, that can get you, I, I guess, like a blue boy or something. That could potentially get you something big, too. I mean, it says you can summon a spellcaster, so it doesn't even have to be... Um, it doesn't even have to be a prophecy monster. It could be literally any spellcaster. So if you, if you open up your mind and try to play it with, like, Dark Magician or something, holy crap, this card could be kind of crazy, especially if you can mill a bunch of uh, spellbook cards. Uh, so, I don't know, dude. I think this is the only, like, really amazing reprint. Uh, aside from our, our boy, uh, Montage Dragon, who I just absolutely love that card. Uh, but, yeah. Let me know what you guys think and what you guys think are your...
best, like most favorite, like um, level up rewards from the new thing. Honestly, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna check the Eye of Truth right, real quick. Okay, there it is. I was so I was super curious about Eye of Truth. Uh, it's an Ishizu Ishtar level up reward. It's super old, very very old. And now it's just Carly's for some reason too. Uh, we already have two copies from Ishizu, and now they're just giving us Carly with the third. I don't know why. But they just gave it to us. Let me like let's end off this video. What do you guys think of the new um, level up rewards? Let me know if you guys have a favorite level up reward, or if you guys think any of the new level up reward cards can be heavily abused and made into a real cheeky deck. Let me know in the comments below. But that's pretty much that. And if you guys enjoyed, go ahead and leave a like, share, and subscribe for more Duel Link shenanigans. But anyway, thank you guys for watching today. Have a great day, and see you guys.